Hey everybody, good morning. Tom Rigsby here with another edition of 7 Minutes in the Morning. We're going to cover key number 7 to a happy, healthy, balanced life right after this intro. Stick around. So I got the big coffee mug out this morning, and this is my second one. Hey, uh, how are you doing this morning? It is Wednesday. Uh, let's see, that means coffee shop show's coming up there in about two hours. But before we get to that, we're going to wrap up today uh, the seven keys to happy, healthy, balanced life. Good morning, Keith. If you... If you are watching live or on the replay, doesn't matter. Do what Keith just did. Drop me a note down there in the comments. Say hi. Let me know that you're here. That's always encouraging for moi to uh, see that people are here watching the show. Well, for the last six days, we've been talking about these keys to a happy, healthy, balanced life. And uh, good morning, Joe. Good morning, Ramona. Thank you guys for being here. So, you know, we started this conversation out over a week ago, where we were talking about work-life balance and how really I don't believe that there is such a thing as work-life balance, mainly because for two factors, right? One is because in order to believe that there has to be, that there can be a work-life balance, that presupposes that they are two separate things, work and life, and they're on some kind of teeter-totter, and we're trying to find a way to make them balance. The reality is, if you've ever been at work and thought about something from home, or been at home and thought about vacation, or vacation and thought about work, it's a great example of how it's just life. There's not work and then life. It's just life. Right? Work is a part of life. Vacations are a part of life. Going to the grocery store is a part of life. So what we need to do, rather than try and separate them out into these two distinct things, is make sure that they have their correct place and that they happen in balance and I believe the reason I don't believe in work-life balance is because I think there are seven key aspects to having balance and a happy healthy balanced life we've talked about them so far we're going to hit the last one today so I'll do a quick recap the first one is managing your time well if you don't manage your time then time manages you and then you look down at the end of the day and like man where did the day go you know you're never going to get a chance to do that day over. If you don't manage how you spend your time, somebody else will do it for you. Number two is taking care of your health. What good does it do to find success and not have the health to enjoy it? Right? That's, uh, that's kind of important for me. Uh, number three is those important relationships. At the end of our days here on the planet, we're probably not going to ask for our cell phones so we can send one more email. We'll ask for those important relationships to come spend time with us, right? So why wait until then? Find a way to make them make time and effort and presence. That's really what we're after. Make presence for those important relationships today. E, and this is spelling out a word, so if you're writing these down, so far we're T-H-R. Now E is emotional labor. We are all uniquely gifted, talented, and placed to do work that matters. That work that, that gives us joy and fulfillment, creates value in the world, that is emotional labor, my friends, and that is what we are after. So that's E. The next letter is A. That's for adventure, activity, alignment. I personally like alignment and adventure. I can't decide <laughs> on those two. Alignment, everything we need to, that we do needs to be aligned toward the outcome that we're trying to create, that definition of success that we've written for ourselves. Or adventure, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, I like both of those. So, A, yesterday we talked about D, which is development. There are only two states, growing or decaying. Personally, I don't want to sit around and rot, so I'm going to grow. And that's where all of those, where they go? There they are. That's where all those come in. All those books, learning, uh, growing, keeping your brain, keeping the uh, neuroplasticity high in your brain so that you don't forget how to learn. Hey, good morning, Eric. Thank you for being here this morning, too. 
Yeah, I, Keith is spot on here. Be engaged in whatever it is that you do. You know, Mike Rowe, yeah, I've probably talked about this over the last week, but Mike Rowe, the host of wildly uh, popular TV show on Discovery for a few years, uh, called Dirty Jobs, he has asserted, and I kind of like this, that you should not, <coughs> excuse me, you should not follow your passion, but rather bring your passion to what you do. I like that. Um, because we all have, we all have passions, and we can't, look, it, it's not, it's like running your engine at 100% all the time. You can't do it all the time. It'll burn the engine up. But you can hit it every once in a while. And you can bring that to the activities where it's needed. All right. And then uh, another quick quote, and then we'll get on to uh, today's, to the last letter of uh, the analogy. Uh, not the analogy, the acronym. Uh, the other one is don't let what you do be all that you do. That's where the activity, the adventure uh, comes into play. All right, so last letter. Anybody want to get a guess for what the last letter is? If you've written them all down so far, you should have T, H, R for relationships, E for emotional labor, A for alignment or activity or adventure, D for development. Drum roll, please. I get better at that. S. S is the last letter, and today S stands for significance. We all have a need to feel a, 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 um, a desire to feel needed. We want to know that we'll be missed when we're not here. And I've talked about this a couple of times in the context of legacy. Um, about a year and a half ago, I had the uh, opportunity to give a eulogy at a funeral, and in that, um, it, in preparing that, I came across this idea that we tend to work toward our our significance in life is building something big, right? And, and just for visual, it's, it's a big rock out in the middle of the field, right? There's the monument to Tom, right? But in reality, and, and everybody can go there and gather around and say, look at this big thing that Tom did. Wow, he's a great person. He did this big thing. The reality, though, is that what is more helpful and has a more significant impact and leaves a longer lasting and far more effective legacy is not one big rock, but thousands, tens of thousands of tiny pebbles. It's the little things that you do every day that make the road easier for those behind you. So think about using those little pebbles, little rocks, to pave a pathway, right? You might be going down a muddy uh, foot trail right now, but the more of these little pebbles, the more of the little rocks uh, that you leave behind, the easier it will be for somebody to come behind you. Now that is a lasting legacy. That is significance. You know, I used to use this analogy about I got really cynical about employment and work because I, I use this analogy called the bucket of water rule, right? You take a bucket and you fill it up with water, you stick your hand down in there, leave it in there for you know, 37 seconds, yank it out really fast. The size of the hole that's left behind is how much you'll be missed when you're gone. See, that's just a, that's a really jaded point of view, isn't it? But that's when... I was looking for somebody else to validate my significance, right? Or, or maybe issue my significance. We, I've talked a lot this week about how we are indoctrinated into believing or, or accepting this employee mindset for how we live our life, right? That if we do the things, we follow the rules, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is always going to equal 6, and we do this and this and this, and it always equals retirement and happiness and blah, blah, blah. I just don't believe that. We should be able to find happiness and fulfillment every day. And if we're not, then, then we're not doing something correctly. And I think one of the key things is this looking for significance. So how do you do that? Well, that's one of the reasons I encourage you to begin every day with gratitude. What am I grateful for today? 
Now, it might seem like they don't go together, but here's why I want you to think about it uh, in that way. When you think it, it is impossible, impossible, to be selfish and grateful at the same time. Can't be done. If, if you are honestly and sincerely looking for a way to be grateful, you, you can't sit there and think, well, I guess I'm grateful for my good looks. I mean, that might contradict me, but... But that's an outward-facing exploration, right? What am I grateful for? Who else has helped me? What else has contributed to helping me get to where I am? And then when you do that at the beginning of the day, it sets your whole day up to be this this outward-focused, uh, what can I do for other people, right? I mean, right here, stuck on the monitor. You know, what can I do to create value for the people around me today? Right? That's thinking outward. If you're doing that, you are creating significance. You are creating those little pebbles that will pave the road behind you. It's not some big thing. And look, here's, here's why this is really important, I believe. Because when we think about our significance or our legacy being some large, huge granite stone, right? That seems really big and really difficult. And not something that I can do. But I can drop little rocks along the road. I can make it easier for somebody else. I can answer a question when, when somebody else who's in my professional field or starting a business or my neighbor has a question. I can answer a question. Right? I can write an article. I can share my experience. I can make a couple of videos. Right? Those are all things those are all little pebbles that we leave behind us. I want you to think about that today as you're beginning your day with gratitude. right? What can you do to add value to the people around you? If you begin every day thinking about that, I promise you, promise you, you're going to have that significance in your life. Keith says you need res- Do we? Is that a question, Keith? Do we need respect for our work? Um... If, if that's a question, yes, I think we do need respect for our work. If we don't, if we don't believe there's value in the work that we're doing, then it will not be fulfilling. Right? We're all supposed to do work that matters. Work that matters adds joy and fulfillment to my life and creates value for other people. If I'm not getting joy and fulfillment out of it, it, it then then it's not work that matters. It might be a job. It might even be your chosen career. But look at what happens. Think about life, right? How many well-meaning teachers, guidance counselors, and parents have told children, you can't, that you are, you're a great dancer, you're a great painter, you're a talented writer, but you'll never make a living doing that. What are you going to do for a real job? And they've destroyed that child's ability to see and do, find and do, that work that matters because they've diminished the value of it. There's a tremendous amount of value in people that can tell stories through written word, through painting, through dance. I mean, those are all valuable things. And I, I, great question, Keith. So he says, do people remember the people who dropped the pebbles in the 1880s? Look, look, there they, yep, there they are right there. They wrote all of those. Right? No, we don't, typically, but we should. Because there's a whole body of knowledge out there that we can grow that, that we can draw from. It's what we were talking about yesterday in in uh, in development. All these people spent years to learn what they put in this book and I can I can learn it in a couple of hours. That's a great bargain for me. Right? And we should, and, and I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to do something with that, Keith. Uh, probably next week. I'm going to do something with that, though. Remembering the people that have put pebbles down ahead of us. Just think of the people that I quote very often. I mean, for me, I mean, these are the people who have made it easier for me. Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar. Th- those people have had an impact. They've left a mark, right? 
Even, look, and here's how it plays out. Even if they only were significant to me, I have learned from them and now turn around and share that with you so that they're having an impact on you also. Sitting at the feet of masters, Eric says. Yep, absolutely. That is 110% true. All right. We'll wrap it up for today. Wow, 15 minutes into it already. Coffee Shop Show is coming up at 9 o'clock where uh, Mr. Eric Mulford who just commented there. He'll be, uh, he and I will be doing the show together live from Old Town Coffee off Pride Avenue in Huntsville. If you're in town, come by. We like that live cafe audience. If you're not, join us right here. Uh, and actually, there's a new URL for that, too. You can go to thecoffeeshopshow.com. That gets you to the right place to watch the show. Share that amongst your network. Be there or be square. All right. That's it for today. Talk to you again. Oh, by the way, I haven't decided what I'm doing with the show tomorrow. I might have to take the day off tomorrow. The granddaughter, the newest granddaughter, is coming to town. If she's awake. She'll be on the show. If she's not, there won't be a show (laughs) because she's going to sleep right there uh, in the floor. So, I don't know. Kind of check in in the morning. We'll we'll see what goes on. Maybe I can pre-record something for you. But, uh, you know, got to put that important relationship uh, where it belongs. All right. He says, go drop pebbles. You go drop pebbles today. <clears throat> Come back, leave them in the comments, or well, I'll ask again tomorrow too. What uh, you know? What pebbles are you dropping? Share that. Maybe you can give somebody an idea. They can drop pebbles they didn't even know they had in their pocket. All right, that's it. Really, honest to goodness, done. You guys have a great Wednesday. I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>